Welcome to Learning Functional JavaScript Section 4, Function Composition. In this section, we will follow up on what we learned in Section 2 and perform some neat tricks with functions. We'll partially apply them, curry them, and finally compose them to create powerful abstractions from small generic functions. This is video 4.1, Partial Function Application. In section 2, we discover the power of being able to pass functions around to separate what to do from the mechanics of how to do it. In this video, we will expand on this technique by learning about partial function application, which enables us to pass functions around with greater flexibility. Consider the added flags function from the previous section. Now let's assume that the second function didn't exist, but instead we only had a generic nth function. This is still a rather trivial function. The power lies in being able to look up array indices with a function that composes well with other functions instead of through dedicated syntax which does not compose well at all. We will see an example of this shortly. In order to write added flags with this function, we would need to prefill the first argument because we always want to pass in 1 as the first argument. In line, it would look like this. Partial function application is about prefilling arguments this way. It looks like this. The partial function returns a new function. When you call it, any arguments passed to it are added to the ones originally provided. Implementing the function is quite straightforward. First, we extract all the arguments to prefill from the arguments object. The function we return will build the full argument list by concatenating the prefilled arguments with the ones passed into the call. Now we can use partial to implement added flags. One approach is to inline the call and create a one-off function. This is often good enough. However, some partially applied functions are useful over and over again, and in those cases, we can give the partially applied function a name so we can reuse it later. This basically takes us back to where we started, but we now have partial in our toolkit, and second is just a partial application of the more generic nth function. This example shows how the function version of accessing individual array elements composes better than raw property access. There's no way to inline the raw property access the same way we did with the call to the second function. Remember in video 3.3, we implemented the boot time reading and parsing of page files using promises. We can make some improvements in this code using partial function application. First, consider the parse file function. We can break things apart a little to make things clearer. We'll extract a function that gets the ID from the file name. We will also extract a page creating function. If we make it so it takes the ID as its first argument, we can conveniently partially apply it and pass the result to the promise then function. The result is very compact and almost declarative. So far, so good. As you might remember, the parse there function takes a directory finds all the files, parses them all, and resolves with a list of pages. Let's use partial application to make this more concise. The path.join call always takes the same directory as the first argument. Enter partial. Unfortunately, this fails horribly. But why? It turns out that map passes more than one argument to its function. In addition to the value, it also passes the index as well as the whole array. Basically, this is what's happening now. This is causing path.join to fail because it only works with strings. Does that mean we can't use partial application in this case? Of course it doesn't. But we need to make sure that only the first of the three arguments are actually passed on to path.join. That is what unary is for. Unary produces a new wrapper function that ensures that the original function will only ever be called with one argument, or, if none are passed, zero arguments. Now we can have our cake and eat it too. Sometimes, extracting and naming partially applied functions like these help with the readability of the code. 
Before we're done loading and parsing pages, we need to sort them. We'll start with a straightforward inline sort. We sort the pages by comparing IDs such that the lower IDs are sorted before higher IDs. If you've ever written a sorting comparison in JavaScript, you'll know that most of them look pretty much like this. They compare two specific properties on the objects being sorted. Let's see if we can break the specifics of our sort away from the mechanics of sorting objects by some property. Not too shabby. While sorting by comparing two properties is very common, it would be even nicer to have a sorting function that just sorted by some function, one that we can inject to determine how two items compare. By taking the function as the first argument, we set it up for some sweet partial application as well. That's better. All we have to do now is to extract the property lookup function. Let's call it prop. Prop is another one of those functions that look too simple to even bother with, but they turn out to be really useful. Let's see it in combination with sort by. Beautiful! Once again, we end up with more than half the code in completely generic, highly reusable and composable functions. And the specific application of those functions are fairly elegantly expressed as a pipeline of function calls. In this video, we have seen how partial function application is a powerful tool that allows us to create very useful functions by simply pre-filling some arguments on existing functions. In the next video, we will dive into currying, which is a specific form of partial application.